So, Kevin Harrington here at the ESGT in Brighton. Um, you're from the Institute of Cancer Research and one of UK's leading viral gene therapists. Tell us what you're most excited about at the moment. I think the big developments in the field relate to the use of systemic delivery of oncolytic viruses, um, both as single agent therapies, but also, I think, more importantly, in combination with standard therapies such as cytotoxic chemotherapy, and also some studies looking at the combination with uh, external beam radiotherapy. And this gives us, I think, the opportunity to bring bring virotherapy into frontline therapy rather than just concentrating on pe treating patients with uh, incurable disease multiply relapsed after previous lines of treatment, we have the opportunity to bring these agents into first line therapeutic combination regimens with curative intent and I think that's where we'll see real benefit from these drugs. And which tumor path pathways do you think this is going to make the most difference to? I think certainly from the point of view of the, the tumors which are curable um, with standard therapies which don't necessarily involve surgical excision, then I think those diseases which involve either combination chemotherapy or, from my point of view, external beam radiation as part of their curative treatment. So from from that context, patients with lung cancers, patients with head and neck cancers, um, patients with um, diseases perhaps of the gynae tract may be good candidates for these sorts of approaches. In the palliative setting, I think certainly diseases for which there are relatively few active agents, such as melanoma, will remain a good indication for these drugs, certainly in the next five to ten years. Now, one of the agents you've been working on is Rheovirus. Why do you think that's a particularly exciting agent? Um, Rheovirus is, um, is an agent that we have been working with now for the last six or seven years and I think certainly from my perspective and with our collaborators, so that it would include Professor Alan Melcher in Leeds and Professor Hardev Panda in Guildford, with whom we've actually done all of these trials in combination and also with Johan de Bono at the Institute of Cancer Research. Um, what that's allowed us to do is really look at this in the full process of taking it from phase one through phase two and then phase three studies. So we conducted the first single agent intravenous administration study of Rheovirus six years ago. I think the most important lesson we learned from that was the safety of the agent. We had useful pharmacodynamic data showing that we had viral localization in the tumor and we learned a lot about the antiviral immune response. That informed the design of our subsequent combination phase one studies with drugs and with radiation and has allowed us to actually target populations for the phase three studies. So the common, the, the current phase three study now in Rheovirus is with, uh, with combination of carboplatin and paclitaxel in patients with relapsed head and neck cancer. Um, and that's a randomized control trial and that's already recruiting globally and going very, very well from the point of view of recruitment. So I think from that perspective, Rheovirus has really been a very good front runner for the field. Of course, on the other side, the work with Generex is also showing great promise. Yeah. You're talking about um, virotherapy in the UK today. Where would you rank the UK globally? In, uh, in its advance in the field? Um, I think we've been able to make a real contribution. Certainly, uh, when we began the studies, our first systemic virotherapy study with intravenous rheovirus started six or seven years ago here in the United Kingdom. At that point, um, the company that was developing that agent was struggling to do single injection studies in the, in the US we were able to have a much more open dialogue with the regulatory authorities here and actually persuade them that it would be reasonable for us to use multi-dosing. Um, and that's allowed us to drive this forward very, very quickly here, I think, in the UK, and has allowed us then to do studies with other agents, including a vaccinier agent from a company called GeneLux. Um, also, we've been involved very actively with the BioVex program going into phase three that is now completed in melanoma. We, in fact, completed a combination chemo-radiation study with that agent in patients with newly diagnosed head and neck cancer. So we've been in a position, I think, to take agents into new directions, which the rest of the world has not necessarily been able to follow. Now, of course, in the Far East, there's been a big program as well with um, with vaccine your agents, and that's, I think, been the other place where this has been led very strongly. 
I think the regulatory environment in the US has made things difficult for them. One of the uh, things that's coming on the horizon is the reorganisation of re the multiple regulatory agencies in the UK into a single streamlined um, uh, vehicle. Uh, you were sort of implying that the Gene Therapy Advisory Committee here had been particularly um, helpful facilitatory in getting those studies. Do you see any danger for the new regulatory structure? I think the change should always be seen, I think, as an opportunity, but of course there's also the the situation where we have had a very good relationship with uh, with the regulators. Now, in fact, for Rio virus, because it's not uh, it's not a, um, a modified agent, we actually didn't have to go to GTAC for that. But in the other discussions that we've had with GTAC, with the modified agents, the modified vaccinia, and with the HSV studies that we've done, GTAC has always been extremely helpful. In fact, Gene, the GTAC uh, organization has moved on to such a point that in the latter discussions we were having about the phase three trial of um, the herpes simplex virus, we didn't even have to go to GTAC main organization. They've now actually, they had the organization so that they were deferring this to other, other committees and we went to ethics committees around London to discuss that without actually having to take it to the GTAC committee itself. The reorganization I hope won't damage that process but I guess time will tell. Okay, there's a real energy enthusiasm about the field at the moment and I know you're due to give your talk so thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks very much.